Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for having me here. It's really a pleasure. Thank you, Manuel. Um, I'm, a, I'm a lawyer, um, and um, this is uh, basically the, the result of um, a book I, I published in Portuguese. I'm, I'm currently translating it into, into English, so every feedback I get today is, is going to be great um, to perfect it. Um, this is about, um, I think, a topic. It, it works well with, with the topic of, of, of the conference and with some of the things we've heard until now, especially uh, Murat's uh, presentation earlier about the democratic principle. And um, it's about independence inside the EU. And as I will try to demonstrate, and this is based on my own perspective of the legal and political nature uh, of the EU, this is an incredible paradox, which is the fact that uh, I believe the European Union was created to perpetuate the survival of European nation states, but it's being used instrumentally by sub-state nationalisms to, to attain the, the ultimate goal, which is to become a member state of, of the European Union. And that's why uh, I think this is a very interesting topic uh, for us to understand uh, how the European Union is evolving and how it is actually creating, uh, potentiating the destruction of, of, of its constitution units, which are the, the member states. Uh, and so uh, I, will, I will deal mostly with the topic of separatism and European integration, how they are connected, and then I will go to the legal parts, which is first the question of self-determination and secession. This is mostly international law and constitutional law, and we've been discussing this a lot in the last few years, because uh, Russian arguments in Ukraine mostly dealt with this. Uh, but legally speaking, my question it was very simple, uh, which was, um, in 2014, if Scotland actually acceded to independence um, with the agreement of the United Kingdom, could Spain actually block the, 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 the inclusion of, Spain, of, of Scotland as a member state? Could Spain, uh, invoking its sovereign prerogatives, block the accession of, uh, of, of, of the people who wanted to become a state with the agreement with, of the whole state? Or more problematic, this is 2017, and the president of Catalonia, the Generalitat, Puigdemont, declaring the independence of Catalonia, arguing, oh, isn't Europe a democracy? We want to be independent. We just have a of several referendums. So how come other states could actually block our accession uh, to, to the European Union? So we have, this is basically the reason I wanted to, um, to, to deal with this topic, the legal reasons specifically to understand in the constitutional polity, which is the EU. Uh, first, how can we deal with agreed secessions? So the Scottish case, if Scotland became independent, and because um, there was this innuendo, especially in Spanish press, oh, if Scotland becomes independent, we are not sure we're gonna accept what they call an internal enlargement of the European Union, uh, because we are sovereign, we have this power under the treaties, and this um, allows me to discuss what is the concept of uh, European citizenship, what does it mean in a situation like this, and more problematic, um, in 2017 uh, with the Declaration of Independence of Catalonia. That's basically when I decided to do this book. I was watching TV live uh, from the Parliament, for the, the Parliament of Catalonia. They, they were declaring the independence. Uh, of course, it didn't went nowhere uh, because the Spanish state intervened and uh, he had to go in, into exile to Brussels, but some of the members of the Catalan government actually went to prison, uh, namely Conqueras which I will talk about later. So, but this basically means that Osman was wrong when he said, okay, national have had its peak. We are not gonna talk much more about that. And, and the problem is, of course, that we have in Europe many uh, imagined political communities. There are several. Uh, not all of them are relevant, of course. We know that, and if you go to Rock, I'm basically talking about uh, what would be the phase C nationalism, which is nationalisms uh, in uh, where people that see themselves as sovereign and want to have their own state, but actually do have a large support of their own population. So, of course, we are talking about Scotland, Flanders, um, as Catalonia, and, and for me, particularly the, the Basque country, because the first years of my life I spent them in the Basque country, and I have these memories in the 80s of uh, political violence to attain an um, independence. So this was a topic that for me was always uh, very interesting and, and relevant. But the interesting part is that, uh, and this is one of the other reasons I wanted to try to understand 
is why in the last 10 years did we have a lot of referendums on independence? We had one in Italy, in Veneto. Of course, it wasn't constitutional, but the social court didn't allow for that. Uh, we had a, a referendum, uh, referendum in Scotland with the agreement of, of Westminster, and the Scots voted um, to stay uh, in the United Kingdom, although they voted to stay in the United Kingdom uh, with the argument that was made by the, the Remainers saying you have to stay in the United Kingdom if you want to stay in Europe. And of course, we have a lot of discussions right now about the possible Indy Ref 2 and the breakup of the United Kingdom because they say, okay, the conditions have evolved, and if you want uh, to go back to the European Union, you actually need to leave uh, the United Kingdom. But the discussion about European integration was very interesting because it, it was used by, the, by the, the no vote saying, okay, this is the only way you're gonna stay in the European Union. And the Scots said, no, no, this is an agreed secession. The other member states have to allow us to go inside the European Union. Uh, but of course, there were other questions in the referendum, namely the pound and the fact that they wanted to remain outside the, the monetary policy of the European Union. But for me, the Spanish case is the more problematic, by far. Um, so this is 2017, if you go to Europe, especially during the World Cup, Football World Cup, European World Cup, you'll see a lot of these demonstrations, nationalist demonstrations. People go to the streets, they wave their flags, but in this case, this is from a pueblo somewhere uh, in, in, in Spain, and they went to the streets with flags to salute the Guardia Civil, which is the military police, that was, was sent by the Madrid government to Catalonia basically to stop the Catalans to do a mock referendum. It was unconstitutional, but these are, these are people in Spain, and I was, of course, I'm in Portugal, the, and we are the country next door, and I, I couldn't understand what was going on to see people actually going to the streets, like um, it could be the Roman legions going to fight the barbarics, but it was the, the Guardia Civil going to, to Catalonia, and I don't know if you remember the scenes, and afterwards uh, some members of the Catalan government um, went, uh, went to jail. Uh, why? Because, and this is the interesting part, they were proposing to the people the independence of Catalonia, but it was an independence inside the European Union. There was no discussion of being independent outside uh, the European Union, which is, of course, uh, something completely new, and, and it shows how the European project is being used by substate nationalists to achieve their goals because they know this is the only way they could have massive popular support. And this, of course, creates here a paradox, which is we created the European Union in the 50s and the 60s because nation states, and this is middle world thesis, had no other option to preserve the survival of the European nation state. And now what we see, basically, in several European nation states is that those European nation states are being uh, challenged by substantive nationalism uh, all over around. Why is this happening? I believe this is happening for two reasons. Of course, one is internal, and the other one is external. The internal reason uh, is related to the problem of political decentralization in some states. Most European states are not politically decentralized. There are not that many. There is, of course, Portugal, Spain, uh, Italy, Germany, and, and Spain is a good example. Uh, of political decentralization. After the fall of the dictatorship, uh, of course, they had the Constitution of 78 decentralized. But in my view, it committed a, a, a big flaw, which is to give to, to the regions the power to actually enforce education. So they basically were telling their children for the last decades uh, that Catalonia uh, is a different nation, and this is, um, this is actually an exam from a primary school in Catalonia. Uh, the exam was, please, um, draw the, the countries in Europe. That was the exam. So you could see Portugal, France, uh, Germany, uh, Spain, and Catalonia. So did she, did she was marked full points because she drew the countries in Europe, including Catalonia. This, I took this from Spanish press because they were outraged. <laughs> and this is really interesting because one of the things that the member states did in the treaties was not to give the European Union absolutely no uh, um, competence in education, in the education field. Education, according to the treaties, is a complementary uh, competence. So, and actually it's really interesting because the most uh, popular program of the European Union is the Erasmus program. What it is, is a program where the EU basically gives money to the states uh, for the states to give people so they could do mobilities um, in Europe and, and abroad. And, and this is really interesting because the states realized that they could not give the European Union this competence 
because that will probably create Europeans. And they were not interested in that. They were interested in preserving their own um, nation states, but some member states didn't do that. And Spain, in my opinion, uh, is a, a very good example. And, and we can see the numbers. Uh, this is uh, from the Eurobarometer from 2015, where they asked people how they felt. And, and the numbers are very, very interesting. And they also explain Brexit, because um, in the United Kingdom, 64% of the people identified themselves slowly as the British. So their loyalty was exclusively to the United Kingdom, um, and only 31% identified themselves as primarily British and then secondarily European. But if you see the European Union in numbers, we can see that 52% uh, of the people already have a second loyalty to the European Union, which is something that we can trace back to Maastricht and the fact that we have a European citizenship, and this is a legal concept, but it has uh, immediately some effects, uh, at least in the creation of the secondary alliance uh, to the European Union. You see the Portuguese numbers, they are very similar to the European, 55%, but exclusive Europeans, we only have 6%. So all this discussion of the so-called federalism of superstate, it's, it goes nowhere, because in the Schmittian sense, there is no European people, there will never be European state, but what we do have right now is something very typical of federal polities, which is the second loyalty that comes from the fact that we have a second citizenship that uh, goes beyond um, the, national, the, national, the national citizenship. And this is really crucial, because if we have a European citizenship and we have an agreed secession, we need to take in consideration the fact that we have already these alliances. Can we simply say to the Scots, okay, you want to, break, to, go, um, to go outside the, the United Kingdom, you want to be a member state, the United Kingdom has no problem with that, but you cannot be, no longer be part of the European Union, even if that means that you're going to differentize <coughs> millions of people who are European citizens. This, this, of course, creates some legal problems that were not uh, properly addressed um, in, in 2014. And the second uh, question that we have that explains why these sub-state nationalism were so successful is, of course, related to European integration. Um, this is a demonstration of Catalans independ independentists in Brussels. That's where they go to demonstrate, mostly. They demonstrate in Barcelona, and they demonstrate in Brussels. Why? Uh, because this, of course, makes all, every sense. If I was Catalan, I would probably also want it to be independent. Why should I be, be, be in Spain? I'm one of the richest regions uh, in Spain. I have to distribute my, my income with, um, with other regions in Spain. Um, I could talk directly to Brussels without going through Madrid, and actually being a member state of the European Union is going to preserve my integrity against further breakdown, uh, breakups of my own state, because the problem of nationalist the Iranian problem, which is inside one nation there is always another, 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 and of course being part of the European Union is the biggest assurance that a nation state actually has against breakup, and I'm, I'm going to talk a bit about that. Uh, later, uh, later on, and but of course uh, this creates a lot of issues. Uh, what's happening in the European Union, um, which is the, the first one, is more theoretical. Which is okay. Uh, Wilson went to Versailles talking about self determination, and and the idea is to okay, each nation has could, could have its own state, and and we, it would be sovereign. But of course, being part of the European Union means you're not sovereign anymore in the classic sense of the term. You're sovereign because you can leave, and actually, if you if you remember the Brexit referendum in 2016, the slogan from the for the Brexiteers was simply taking back control. It makes every sense. If you want Westminster to do laws about whatever they want to do, you need to leave the European Union. If you want to be sovereign, you need to leave. But this is not what they are act actually asking. They're invoking self-determination. They're invoking democracy. To what? To be part of the European Union, to be part of a federal polity in which they are, they cannot be considered sovereign uh, in the classic sense um, of, of the term. And of course, uh, <laughs> this is, uh, they portray themselves not as ethno-nationalists, especially the Catalans and the Scottish, they portray themselves as, okay, this is a civic nationalism. We want uh, very broad communities, but the fact is, is that we try to create European Union, exactly like Manuel was explaining, to, to, to overcome all this aggressive ethnonationalism that gave rise to world wars. 
And, and this is for me the, 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 the most interesting question, which is, this is, there is really here a paradox, which is we created the European Union to ensure the survival of the European nation state, and the European Union is, used, is being used um, to, uh, to, as an incentive for the dismemberment of, 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 of the European nation and uh, nation state. Uh, and of course, uh, this is not what the founding fathers of the European Union wanted. Uh, this is the only book that I think Schumann wrote. And he said, oh, we are not here to merge states. We are not here to consolidate states. We are not here to create the super states. States are way too different. We are here basically to preserve um, nation states. In Europe, we don't want to eliminate nation states. This is not our goal. So he was very clear. Uh, that doesn't mean that we don't see uh, the European Union fostering these ideas of Europe as something that it comes from uh, from ages, from Greece. Yeah, but but of course that's mostly propaganda, uh, and uh, I don't think we should take that very seriously. Uh, but the idea, of course, of sub-state nationalism is to have one of those born new new flags inside the European Union. That's the ultimate goal. It, it makes sense. I only have five minutes. Legally speaking, <laughs> what's the path? For sub-state nationalism in international law, uh, we don't have. They don't have. They, in international law, there is simply no way that any sub-state nationalism in Europe could actually invoke the principle of self-determination. Uh, the same way that uh, Putin can invoke it, <laughs> cannot invoke it in Ukraine. They, the idea is exactly the same. Either there is an agreement uh, from the host state, or uh, self-determination is more of a political principle. We recognize in international law, internal self-determination, external self-determination is completely uh, out of the question, except in very special circumstances. And this discussion we had in Canada uh, on the Quebec case where the court said, oh yes, only when there is occupation, uh, only when there is this extreme situation where genocide is being uh, committed against that people, only in those circumstances can we actually invoke a theory which is the secession remedy theory that could lead to self-determination. Of course, in Europe, not, not, none of those conditions are fulfilled, neither in Scotland or in, in Catalonia. I, I was just mentioning in Catalonia, they can even tell children what they should know about their own state. So of course, there is absolutely no oppression from, uh, from, the, from, the, from the Spanish state. Of course, the Catalans, they invoke a lot the right to decide, which is this idea, the democratic theory of secession saying, oh, but we should look at this from the human, the fundamental human rights perspective, and people should have a right to decide, he invoked a lot, the Kosovo opinion, but I honestly cannot take anything from the Kosovo opinion, because secession is mostly a constitutional law problem, it's an internal problem, you cannot stamp anything from um, international law, and you, states don't recognize um, unilateral you know, secessions, and the case of Somaliland uh, is, is, a, is a good example of that. So to sum up, what's the path for sub-state nationalism inside the European Union? The path has to be through agreed secession. Okay, it's true, most constitutions um, don't, agree, don't allow for secession, that's not a possibility, although there are some constitutions that actually allow that. In the, the case of Montenegro is a good example. Uh, but most constitutions do not uh, allow that. But the Quebec, uh, the Quebec and the Canada case is a good example but the, because the court, the Supreme Court of Canada, didn't say it was impossible. And the, 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 constitution, the federal constitution of Canada, they actually said that, okay, in some circumstances, if there is a clear majority in Quebec, then they have the right to, to, to succeed. And even in Spain, the constitutional court said, okay, the, the constitution doesn't allow for this, like the Italian constitution doesn't allow for Veneto to succeed. But, okay, this is a democracy, they can uh, try to convince people to change the constitution. That's perfectly possible. But there is no legal pathway in the constitution. Just to sum up, so, um, what is the path for subset nationalism inside the European Union? Well, the European Union, um, incorporation into the EU, and this is the, the slogan um, for uh, the Scottish National Party since uh, the 70s, this idea of independence in Europe, that's where the, the, the title for this presentation comes from. So basically, to uh, become a member state, um, it is necessary to basically um, comply with the constitutional DNA of the European Union. 
what is the constitution DNA of the opinion? Article 2. Okay? Uh, and that, and that, what we see in Article 2 and Article 5, we see the idea of national identity of the states. And of course, uh, that would be the national constitution, in the, the territorial integrity. We need uh, to fulfill with those uh, criteria. And that means that unilateral secession is completely impossible. So if, there is, if, if it was possible, if the Spanish state didn't react and, and, and jailed the Catalan independence, other member states could not recognize Catalonia as an, uh, another EU member state. Uh, and of course, Spain would veto any, any, any change in the treaties uh, for, that, for that possibility. So um, this idea that the Catalans sometimes bring to the public fora, which is, oh, but Article 2 talk, talks about democracy. We had a referendum. We want to be independent. We want to be a member state. So if the European Union is a democracy, then we should be allowed to be a member state. But this is wrong, because the European Union is not a democracy. It's a democracy. It's a union of peoples in the plural. Okay? And we saw that there is no European people, so that argument makes no sense, uh, especially because it's a fair union of states and not a state in that sense. So of course, I don't see you know, that the secession as a, as a possibility. And this comes to my last point, which is agreed secession. And here, things are a bit more murky, legally speaking. Uh, we had a, a German uh, reunification uh, where the Germans decided unilaterally to expand their borders, and everybody said yes, why not? Um, and because we were basically uh, uh, creating a bigger space in the European Union. What I do think is that if we have a situation in a member state where there is a referendum, um, the referendum goes uh, according to the constitution of that state. I believe, and this comes from the, the Supreme Court decision of Quebec, where the court said, well, if Quebec decides to be independent and there is a clear majority, the other provinces have an obligation, and also the federal government, to negotiate with Quebec to get out of Canada. And the same happens here, which is other member states have this, this obligation to negotiate in good faith the possibility of having an automatic incorporation into the European Union. That doesn't mean that the new entity, the new state, would, could actually dictate terms. For instance, the Scots, if they wanted to become a member state of the European Union, they couldn't simply say, oh, but we want our special treatment that the UK already have. That's not possible. But the, 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 the path to becoming a member state, I think it has to be taken into consideration because we are talking about European citizens. And that is a statute that since Maastricht, it's a political statute. Uh, and of course, uh, that, that has to be taken into consideration. But unfortunately, that will not lead us very far. Because even if states negotiate in good faith the possibility of an internal enlargement of the European Union and have these sub-state um, and territories as a new member state, uh, there is, will always be a problem. And the problem are the people. Uh, because uh, we know from, this is a referendum they did in France, <laughs> I don't know if you remember this one, um, after, uh, for the first enlargement. So they asked the French people if it was possible to have an enlargement. So the French constitution actually states that uh, if there is new enlargements, we have to call the people in referendum. Um, and, and here, and this shows why the EU is a constitutional entity and union, and union of peoples and not governments. I'm, I'm basically finishing. And, and so uh, sometimes uh, I think that the idea of this sub-state national is actually achieving the possibility of becoming a member state is very rem remote. Um, and, but of course, I, that doesn't mean that a member state could simply say, no, uh, I, will, I will block any, any, any session. So just to conclude, um, European integration it, uh, prevented the post-war collapse of the European nation state, but I think it, that ironically has been acting as an incentive to its disintegration in, in the 21st uh, century. And this is the second part. This realization of this democratic choice of uh, people having uh, its own state and, and, and a region becoming a member state will always encounter the federal principle as an obstacle because the member states uh, could actually block, or the people in those member states could actually block this possibility for sub-state national. So it's extremely difficult that we can see a path for new member states stemming from uh, current member states, although uh, the fact uh, is that we do see them uh, still uh, very, very, very powerful in, in some member states. Thank you.